dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning. Today is Sunday, June the 23rd. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning, weekend edition. Well, yesterday we had SWAD scheduled, but Mother Nature held out for most of us. Let's bring Brandon in this morning, give a better breakdown of what to expect on this Sunday. Brandon, good morning. Good morning. And yes, we were extremely fortunate yesterday. Some areas did have some issues, but not as widespread as we might have thought. Let's take a look at the cameras this morning. You see one of our big issues so far today on this Sunday is fog. Fog down here in Hazard this morning in the valleys. And and sometimes are some locations on the ridges. Live pinpoint Doppler radar. A little bit of rain off to our west there outside of our area for now. We'll keep an eye on that, but again, not expecting a whole lot today. It's kind of hitting some drier area here in the mountains. Some scattered showers and storms possible this afternoon. Visibility is our big issue as mentioned. Zero visibility. Jackson, Hazard, Pikeville, Jonesville, Williamsburg, and Jacksboro. Close to it there in London and Monticello. So be extra careful if you're traveling this morning. A lot of folks getting ready to head to church, so be careful that as you head out the door. Temperatures in the 60s right now, anywhere from a 60 in Ashland to about 68 there in Monticello and Jacksboro. That's our range across the state. We're seeing 69 in the Tri-Cities. I guess the region is what I should say. So the state, 57 Charleston, 67 Lexington, 73 in Paducah right now. The app cast for today, you can download that for free on all the app stores. Partly cloudy for a little while today, and then we'll see those chances for scattered showers and storms pick up as we get into the mid-80s for most of us later on. I'll have the rest of the forecast in just a few minutes will all righty Brandon thank you well Friday night storms knocked down trees and power lines that meant many people were without power for one Pulaski County family their night almost turned deadly a tree fell directly on their home missing them by just a few feet Chelsea Jones talked to one man who was inside that home last night when Ernie Martin got a weather alert on his phone he took it seriously I told my daughter would you get the flashlights out and within three seconds, the power went out. What happened next is something you'd see in a movie. Within a few seconds, the house came crushing down on top of us. He told his wife and daughter to get down and crawl. We didn't know until we got outside that it was a huge oak tree had blown down right on top of the bed they were sitting on and would have crushed them completely if they hadn't already got onto the floor. After living here for 30 years, this is what's left. Ernie, overwhelmed that his family survived. I yelled out, are you okay? And she didn't answer. My wife didn't answer, and I yelled out again, are you okay? And finally she answered, and I said, just crawl over here. It was lightning flashing, dark, and carrying on, and she made it to my feet. And then we were trapped in the house. We couldn't get out. The doors were all jammed because twisting and turning of the house. And I grabbed the door and just basically ripped the bottom of the half of the door off and she crawled out and my daughter did too. The three are staying at a hotel, trying to figure out how to tell loved ones and how to move forward. Thank you. All right, be careful going out. Lots of trees now. <laughs> oh yeah. Kind of want to know what to say. You know, when they ask, well, what are you going to do? I guess all we can say is we don't know. <laughs> In Pulaski County, Chelsea Jones, WKYT. Meanwhile, elsewhere, the National Weather Service says an EF1 tornado touched down in Simpson County Friday night. The tornado had winds of at least 90 miles per hour. The storm knocked down large trees. There are no reports of any injuries this morning. Well, mine safety regulators say a West Virginia mining death occurred because the mine operator did not identify the place where the miner was standing as an area that should be avoided. The U.S. Mine Safety and Health Administration says the operator also did not train miners to avoid such areas. Areas. Adam DeBoer died in March at a Greenbrier County mine owned by South Fork Coal Company. Well, mountain basketball legend King Kelly Coleman died earlier this week. Loved ones gathered at the Old Wayland Gym for his visitation Friday evening. His funeral was at noon yesterday at Hall Funeral Home in Martin. People from all over the state gathered to remember the Eastern Kentucky legend. Coleman was Kentucky's first Mr. Basketball. Many records he set still stand today.
Yesterday, yesterday afternoon, a helipad in Perry County was dedicated to the late Douglas Ray Adkins. Adkins died from a heart attack in 2016. He was a member and an EMT at the Viper Volunteer Fire Department. Family and friends say he was very active in the county and would always go the extra mile to protect his community. Baseball legend David Ortiz is now out of intensive care two weeks after he was shot and wounded in his native Dominican Republic. His wife says he remains in good condition and continues to recover at a Boston hospital. A gunman shot the former Red Sox player in the lower back earlier this month while he was sitting on a crowded bar patio in Santo Domingo. The bullet passed through him and hit his friend in the leg. Authorities say Ortiz, known as Big Poppy, was not the intended target and was apparently shot by mistake. So far, 11 people have been arrested in connection with the shooting. Folks at the Coal Mining Museum in Benham celebrated a big milestone yesterday. They have officially been open for 25 years. With no plans to stop sharing the coal mining tradition anytime soon, WYMT's Lauren McCourt has more. If you live in eastern Kentucky, you probably know someone who worked in the coal industry. And my granddad was a coal miner, his brother, and, and everybody around us, you know. And as some coal mines shut down, it's important for folks in Benham to keep this tradition alive. We're just celebrating 25 years of sharing the coal history with the community and everybody. Giving people from out of town. People that we have come and visit us come from away from here, so they don't really know a whole lot about coal mines. Or right next door. We lived here 20 some years and we've never been here. A taste of history on what it was like way back then. I feel like it makes people leave believing that we're no different than anybody else. Phyllis Sizemore has worked for the museum for 20 years. <laughs> They've not ran me off yet. <laughs> and says so many people have stopped by, she cannot keep track of just how many visited over the past years. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> I don't have an idea. And just like Phyllis did, they fall in love with the place. Almost everywhere is my favorite spot. I like the restroom. Mm -hmm. And I the hospital. Know. I like yeah. the hospital. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I don't know. I just love it all. Though much has changed in 25 years. It's just constantly growing. Sharing the love and history of coal mining will always stay the same. In Harlan, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. Now for more information on when the museum is open, feel free to head on over to our website at WYMT.com. Well, thanks to your tips, a Kentucky fugitive wanted by the FBI is in custody. The FBI in Louisville says this man, Brian Conley, was captured in Ada, Ohio yesterday. A concerned citizen contacted the FBI after the encounter with Conley. The Hardin County Sheriff's Office in Ohio located Conley and took him into custody without incident. Police say Conley removed his ankle monitoring device near Smith's Grove next to I-65. He was awaiting a trial set for Friday when he ran off. The FBI says Conley was arrested in January for attempting to ransom the parents of a woman from Tennessee. A complaint to the Bell County Sheriff's Department about burglaries and drug activity led to the arrest of three people. Deputies arrested the group at a home in Hewland, in the Hewland community of Bell County on Friday. Brandy Brock was arrested for possession of meth. Joshua Hensley was arrested on outstanding warrants. Deputies arrested Justin Dye in a warrant out of Michigan and charged him with burglary. Deputies arrested a woman Friday morning when she tried to enter the Laurel County Judicial Center while under the influence. Misty Caldwell told deputies she took Suboxone and Neurontin. She had four children with her at the time. Deputies charged her with public intoxication and four counts of wanton endangerment. Later that afternoon, Caldwell's husband, Eric Jones, came to check on the children at the Laurel County Sheriff's Office. Deputies say Jones was slurring his speech and, admit, and admitted to taking Suboxone. Well, two people are behind bars in Laurel County as well after police say they had items used to make meth, like coffee filters with residue on them and baggies with the crystal substance inside. The Laurel County Sheriff's Department arrested Danny Hicks and Devon Smith. Both are facing charges of public intoxication, possession of drug paraphernalia, first-degree trafficking in a controlled substance, manufacturing meth, and first-degree possession of meth. Well, more than 20 people were indicted after a six-month drug trafficking investigation in northern Kentucky. Police found fentanyl, meth, cocaine, and other drugs in Dayton. They also found guns. Authorities began investigating in January. The Dayton police chief says this does not mean the community has major drug dealers.
In Clay County, the Sheriff Patrick Robinson is asking for the public's help in locating a stolen ATV. The Sheriff's Department said the ATV was stolen around 1.30 a.m. this morning off of a property on Highway 638. If you have any information, you can call the Sheriff's Department or Clay County Dispatch. And over in Letcher County, deputies there with the Sheriff's Department are asking for the public's help in finding a stolen side-by-side. -side. The Sheriff's Department says that ADV was stolen from a home in Beaver Dam. Anyone with information is asked to call the Sheriff's Office. A Hall of Fame trainer was banished from a horse track in California after the 30th horse died there this racing season. Officials say Jerry Hollendorfer is no longer allowed at the Santa Anita racetrack in Arcadia. The decision came after the horse American Currency died in a training accident yesterday morning. 29 other thoroughbreds have died since December, but it is still unclear why. Hollendorfer trained four of the dead horses, including American Currency. A number of trainers are under investigation over the deaths, and some results are expected to be announced after today. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, weekend edition. Current and former UK athletes were in Harlan County yesterday teaching a sports clinic. Hear from Bell County's own Macy Morris on why these clinics are so important. And in sports, it is another Yahtzee for Kentucky football. We will introduce you to the two recruits the team picked up Saturday. Some dense fog is around this morning, but most of the day should feature sun and clouds. I'll have the latest forecast in about two minutes.